Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics, and got a video for you today. And today's topic is going to be uh, kind of a mixed bag, but what it's mainly going to be concerning is why caricaturing is good for comic book illustration. So let's go ahead and get started, and I want to explain the process of caricaturing a little bit and why it's very important if, uh, you know, if you want to have a really cool style in comics. Uh, I think caricaturing can be a great way for you to kind of develop that. So uh, one thing about you know uh, caricaturing that's so cool is it teaches you to distort and exaggerate features, uh, which is great for comics because if your all your characters look identical, uh, your, your books uh, are probably going to be pretty boring for the uh, the reader and the viewer. So um, so what what I recommend. Uh, if you can, is to do some caricaturing, take a class on it, uh, have fun with your friends, try it out, whatever. Uh, another thing is that I want to touch on while I do this is that a lot of people, you know, seem to struggle with the concept of making money with art. Uh, caricaturing is actually an excellent way to make money with art, and it's actually extremely lucrative um, if if done in the right fashion. Uh, I actually used to caricature quite a bit. I've done parties, uh, you know, hundreds of parties now. I, I can't even remember uh, how many at this point, but probably in the hundreds. So I did those all over Michigan, uh, and I'm going to explain to you how you can, you know, go about doing that if you're looking to earn some side money. Um, but it's a nice side money job. It's one of those things where, you know, I was charging about a hundred bucks an hour so and that was my cut my agents would actually charge more than that uh, and the hundred an hour is just what I would make so now don't get me wrong the parties were on average three four sometimes five hours um, for like an all-night lock-in um, type event so those were big money makers but the other ones were averaging you know three three fifty but the other thing is you would get really good tips uh, if it was like a social corporate event. Uh, kids event, you're obviously not going to get much in the way of tips um, other than, hey, dude, thanks. That was a really great drawing. Uh, that's your tip. But So lots of appreciation. But everybody loves it. Uh, and and I, I would say I did it for both. I did it to make some money. Uh, but, I, but I was really, the thing that led me to it is, you know, my comic book illustration I wanted to have, you know, all those faces uh, in front of me to draw and for it to help me come up with, you know, cool characters for, for comics. So I really think that that's, that's great for any artist that's trying to develop is to think about doing that. So one of the cool things about caricaturing is, you know, you can just have fun with it. Uh, like this guy, I'm giving these big, huge, bushy eyebrows. Um, you know, you can you the name of the game is fast, and then obviously developing uh, the ability to capture a likeness of the, the character, uh, the person that's sitting in front of you. Uh, but you know, the great thing is you can just practice that with your friends, uh, with pictures off the internet, and you know, getting likenesses of uh, actors and actresses and things like that, um, and then just exaggerating that. So like you know, with this guy, I'm gonna give him some you know big crazy uh, ears so and uh, okay I want to I want to explain um, a little bit more about you know if you if you're interested in doing that and you want to know how to do that I don't want to leave you hanging basically the way that I did it and you can re research all this information um, I, I basically my first gig was a uh, gig in college um, I seen it posted up on a, uh, uh, a board, and it says, "Hey, any artists looking to earn money uh, need a caricaturist this weekend at a party." And you know, I'm, you know, I, I thought I was, you know, Joe Cool, and you know, I could draw anything, and I'm like, "Oh, I can draw comics. Of course, I can draw some funny faces of people." And that's that's literally the extent of my uh, my prequel training to that I just thought I could do it I was overconfident um, and although I pulled off the party and, and everything went swimmingly um, it was actually got pretty scary for a minute because what happened and since I had no previous training to this I just kind of jumped on in and started swimming I got there 
and I was slower than expected. Um, I was probably only doing about four or five paces per hour, and I quickly had this huge line behind me. Uh, luckily, I was, you know, I'm decent, you know, with my social skills. I can entertain and joke and have a good time. So I was just sitting there powwowing with these people, and we are having fun that way. I even remember one lady started drawing me back, uh, trying to be funny, and her sketch was actually pretty uh, funny and horrid at the same time. Um, but, you know, it was cool because it was a lighthearted type deal, and uh, they were kind of forgiving of my shortcomings in the, in the way that I wasn't really fast enough. And I, I think a few people even probably stepped out of the line or whatever. But I got it. I got the job done, you know, was the main thing. And I was then, you know, kind of invigorated and, you know, excited to try it again. And one of the other good things that I remember about this, this was more of a corporate event where it was okay to set out like a tip jar or whatever. And I, I set that out and I only charged 150 uh, to do the party for three hours, which I stayed, I think, four or three and a half, somewhere in there. Uh, but what I noticed is I looked down on my tip cup and it was getting pretty full. And I went over to the... Uh, you know, to my car after I was done with the event and everybody saying thanks for the you know good time and all that fun stuff and uh, I look in there and I got 150 in tips so I literally doubled my money uh, from from what I was paid to do it just by you know setting out a tip cup now certain events they won't want you to do that they're, they're gonna say you know hey uh, this was a corporate structure uh, or, you know corporate event where we're treating our clients uh, we don't want them to be felt obligated to tip so they won't want you to put one out so that's cool but you know you just ask you know if you're if you're you know skeptical of the event uh, obviously kids parties you're probably not going to want to put out a tip cup unless you're you know expecting some bazooka, uh, bazooka bubble gum for your tip or something like that but um but you know the bigger high dollar ones uh mainly the ones where everybody's you know dressed up and they look like they're treating the old lady to a night out in the town yeah, definitely put it out there because, you know, what you'll get is, you know, draw the girl real pretty and she'll be nudging the guy to drop a 20 in there for you on the way out. So, yeah, pretty funny. Um, so, okay, like there, there's a caricature type face, you know, and somebody I could see in comics, you know, just kind of a scraggly backup character, you know, no, you know, just whatever, you know, those kind of a gumpy looking guy, you know, but that's more of my character side showing through, you know, if I was drawing comics, I don't draw everybody looking like, you know, uh, super Superman or whatever you know you got to have those backup characters so um, so now another one like I'll give this character more of a rounded face um, I think here maybe I'll do it like uh, um, more of a bubbly kind of bigger gal or whatever all right so generally I do like the eyes kind of tilted up and back like this uh, generally with the uh, if I'm going to make a character smiling or doing a big grin, I actually start with that first. Um, for some reason, it, it it helps me to fill in the rest of the face if I get the biggest detail on there first. So I generally start with the eyes, but for this type of thing, I'll start with the mouth. So at any rate, with that, um, you know, I think that the caricaturing uh, can be lucrative. You can make some good money at it. Um, I quit doing it because I... I'm now focusing more on my my uh, my comic and my illustration work, and I also own a graphics company, so I'm a pretty busy, dude. But you know, I uh, I had a good time with it, and I made some good side money. There was a lot of times those checks rolling in from from caricatures were pretty sizable, and and I got to where I was doing you know four or five parties a month, and you know at 300 a pop, I mean it adds up pretty quick, you know. But you're not going to do that every month, and and the only bad thing I'm going to be totally transparent when explaining this stuff to you because I don't want you to you know say oh, Rob said charactering was awesome and I went and did it it's it's harder you know it's it's it is going to be a little bit difficult it's not the easiest thing you do got to get fast I got to the point where I could draw about 12 of these per hour um, you know 10 to 12 faces per hour um, the other thing is that you're going to want to you got to have reliable transportation I had to drive pretty far to some of these events um, uh, but some of them comp you in rooms too, which is pretty cool. So I got to stay at some pretty nice hotels in the process. Uh, I got to even stay at the one hotel on like, uh, I can't remember if it's Traverse City or Grand Traverse with a bear golf course by Jack Nichols or what. It was a really nice hotel and they just comped me. It was pretty amazing. So amongst, and I, got, and I drew all weekend, so I made really great money on that one. But um, 
you know, but so you'll have to travel, have reliable transportation. Uh, they won't accept if you get lost, so make sure you got a GPS. I could tell you a story about that one. Um, and then also, um, you know, your social skills got to be subpar. You just got to be able to carry on a conversation and have a good time, and you know, uh, just mind what you say. I guess you know, don't don't get a little too fresh. You know, don't. Uh, I've seen some character artists. They end up being a little too rude and crazy and looks like they're having more fun than the guests. I don't know if that's a good idea, but whatever, uh, you know, it's, if that's, that's how you want to play it, you know, give it a try. Um, and the other thing is, oh, I guess the only, I'll give you the negative. So I'm not totally promoting this thing because I'm really promoting that it's really great for comic book illustration. But, um, the other thing is this, that, you know, you're going to have to work like weekends and holidays is that's, that's when, everybody's partying and, and doing these events um, on those those days so you end up having to give up your kind of your weekends and holidays like I remember one of the towards the end of when I decided to quit doing it uh, I had a good call on one and uh, they were like you know hey we need you for this event and it's like you know uh, this weekend and I'm like this weekend it's 4th of July weekend or something you know I don't remember when it was but it was like 4th of July or something like that or maybe I was turning awake, I don't know, but anyways, it was 4th of July, and it was like last minute, and I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't know, I better not do that one, well, we really need you, I mean, come on, you can't do this event, and, you know, the kind of pressure in me, and I was like, no, dude, I really don't want to spend my 4th of July drawing funny faces this time, you know, get me on the next one, or whatever, and, and I could tell they were kind of let down, and I, I felt like I should have took the job, because I did need the money, but at the same time, you know, you will have to give up a little bit of that so you gotta you know you gotta give and take that you're gonna get the financial gain but you're gonna have to give up uh, some of the the holidays and, and weekends and stuff like that because that's when you're gonna get the most events like a lot of people are gonna want to book you for New Year's so uh, so now the other step what you would do is you would contact agents near local areas and their entertainment agencies uh, you can call every everybody from bounce ho- bounce houses to um, uh, just entertainment, wedding planners, things like that, you know, to get your name out there. So that's how you basically get the gigs, you know. They're going to probably take somewhere in the neighborhood of about 25%, 20%. just depends on the agent and how slimy they are, I guess. Just kidding, agents. Just kidding. Um, you know, they got to make their cut, too. They're running a business. They're marketing you and promoting you and all that fun stuff. So, they, you know, they got to get their piece. Now, the thing that you can do... Um, is make sure that you make about well depend on your area you know make sure you make about 75 to 100 bucks an hour that's pretty much the going rate and as a beginner you can charge 50 to get your name out there and get some parties uh, I quickly went up to 75 and then towards the end I was at 100 and certain events that were further away I'd even figure out another 25 bucks uh, an hour for gas or time driving so you know that's all up to you and what your preference is and what you feel you need to make you you've got to make that decision but back to my original idea of this is that it's a great way to make money but it's even a better way to learn you know face shapes and characters and drawing different styles of eyes and lips and nose and mouth. And it's, it's great reference for illustrating comic books so that's I mean really why I was doing it I mean it, it sounds silly because here's this thing where I've you know, done comics and had this love for comics and had, you know, mediocre success with it. I have been published and, you know, I, I love comics. It doesn't matter. I'm not doing it for the money. But at the same time, I probably made more money caricaturing than, you know, that I've made in comics by far. So it's funny that I actually did the one to, to better my ability in comics. And in all reality, it's been more beneficial financially to me than, than illustrating comics. But but again, it's not all about money. I shouldn't make it sound like that. But at the end of the day, you do got to make some money to keep on going or you're going to get probably discouraged and, and you know, go get a, a different, you know, way of income. And, and that's going to take up your time that in turn doesn't allow you to illustrate as much. So it doesn't allow you to become good enough in turn to make the bigger bucks in, you know, comics or otherwise. So, so yeah. So, so there's phase number two. Um where am I, I see I'm at 14 and 50 seconds on my recorder, um, so, you know, these aren't fully finished faces, now, 
Uh, the other thing I want to tell you about it, in case you decide to, you know, pursue charactering or whatever, is uh, I used to start off in pencil and then ink over them. Uh, I realized that took way too long, and then I eventually moved to just going right to black and white ink. Uh, I used Sharpies and fine point Sharpies in a, in a larger sheet of paper, and uh, that's the other thing that allowed me to move quicker. So just, you know, more little tidbits of information as far as that goes. Now, the reason why it, you know I find it so beneficial to illustrate in comics is that so many people draw uh, comics and and they have like these same kind of characters you know over and over again and I and I'm guilty too it's real easy to get in the habit of drawing uh, the same type of character um, but you've got to be able to what's it doing here sorry uh, you've got to be able to show some diversity in your work so. Uh, now this one I'm going to draw like the, well, the more traditional uh, caricature that you're going to get where, you know, you get this girl and she wants to be drawn as a pretty little teeny bopper or whatever, uh, which is also really great for comics because that's, you know, highly popular in the comic drawings. So, so this one will give like the more slender face, you know, a nice little skinny neck. It's probably too skinny, but for characters it'd probably be like this. It'd be really skinny. Uh, that's the other thing you're going to draw an extremely tiny body to go with it and that's where I really excelled at I would actually draw the cooler little bodies and backgrounds I think than some of the guys could draw uh, better likenesses but I would compensate that on mine with the fact that I could draw kind of cool backgrounds I was really inventive with the uh, the little background details and stuff like that so you know you might be able to do that if you're you know if your ability to like just perfectly uh, draw the the person into that sketch kind of suffers a bit or it's not as good as you you know would like uh, try to compensate elsewhere by maybe you know doing really cool features or the backgrounds like I said or you know just something or if you're good at names ah that's another one forgot about that like when um, if I felt the character suffered and I had a little bit of time in the line or whatever I would say hey what's your name you know uh, Isabella is he is Izzy cool for sure yeah cool all right and I would draw like a really cool because I'm, I'm generally pretty good at uh, tagging uh, lettering it's kind of what started my art career is graffiti but you know so I would I would kind of compensate by drawing a cool name in the background you know and it's kind of like giving them more bang for their buck or whatever you know hey let me throw your name on there for you and but the only now the only drawback to that is if the next person on the line saw that they'd want their name too and next thing you know you get a row of names that you had to throw on there so that can be a double-edged sword, so be careful of that. But um, And then the other thing, like I said, is just, you know, speed. You know, making sure, which is, you know, which is good for comic illustration, too, because if you do happen to get a nice gig doing this stuff in comics, uh, you're going to have to be fast to, to work professionally in that industry. Uh, I can't speak from experience because I'm mainly self-published comics, independents, but you know, well, I, I, I did do some for another company, so, and I had to turn out some work there, but it wasn't a steep, steep deadline, um, but, so that's the other thing, if you're thinking about getting into, like, the big, the big wig comics, you know, Marvel, DC, all them guys, uh, just be ready, because, you know, there's 28 pages in a book, so that means roughly a page a day, so you either got to be really fast, or you just don't get to sleep, or, you know, have your weekends, or whatever, so, Alright, so now this one is actually looking a little bit more comic book than caricature. I'm trying to think of some of the artists. Maybe you guys can comment in the section below and remind me, but there's a few artists that, you know, that really kind of caricature when they draw their comics, and that's what made me think about trying to tell you about this, because I've done caricaturing for like, I think I did it for a total of 10 years, uh, and I've done comics for probably... I don't know, 20, um, you know, not 20 years just straight drawing comics, just off and on, you know, it being my passion and my hobby or whatever, but but I, I wanted to say that, you know, there's a lot of artists that actually do more of a, a caricature style, um, so, you know, fill me in, because I'm drawing a blank here as I'm trying to focus on drawing this character, but... Yep, and then, you know, hair, always, you know, practice your hair where you can draw it really fast. I just do these, like, coiled, 
you know, flowing ribbons type thing. I talk about that in my other videos, but it's real easy, you know. And then you can basically just draw the, the shape first um, and then kind of fill it in. I just watched a video by uh, David Finch. He's got a YouTube channel now, so be sure to Google that and check him out uh, or YouTube search him or whatever. But he, he just did a really great uh, video on hair, and he'll say, like, you know, draw the shape first, draw the flowing ribbons, you know, and the dude just can draw his tail off. So check that out and like his videos and share them and all that fun stuff because it will make you a better comic book artist. Okay, so now there's my, you know, basic, uh, you know, caricatured girl if I was trying to make her look, you know, pretty and dainty, you know, slim little face. I think the hairline's up a little too high. Um, now, if I want to embellish this and make it look a little bit nicer, um, take this soft erase, and you can do this on any software. Turn it down to where you can soften these lines just like erasing on paper. Love this effect, by the way. It's like the best way to draw on this stuff. Let's erase it right down like that. And then zoom back in. Grab your digital crayon. And then come back in there and just finalize your lines and you know worry a little bit more about line weight now. Sorry, I'm trying to make it more like about comics now since I got a little bit too deep into the character side of it. But I just wanted to, I don't know, I wanted to t talk about that more because, you know, I feel bad for a lot of artists that are struggling and trying to figure out a way to make money. And, you know, sitting there talking about comics. And, I mean, unfortunately, I haven't had the greatest success in comics in the way of financial gain. So, um, but I, I did pretty well for a while with characters, so I just feel like I need to share that with other young artists out there um, that, you know, might be looking for a way to make ends meet. Because um, it, it can be tough as a, as a, you know, art guy trying to make a, make a buck in this industry. Um, it's a, there's a lot of stiff competition, and, you know, people just don't give you a leg up like, you know, you'd hope for. you got to make your, your leg up. you got to make your way up that chain or that uh, that ladder so yeah just you know focus on cleaning up the line work you know what I like about this you erase that info down or I call it info but it's like you know your scribble scratch your initial sketch you erase that down and then the next layer you can spend kinda of using that data and, and finessing it and getting the lines a little bit more where you want them. Um, I, don't know, I, I just like the feeling that it feels like you're just drawing on paper when you do it this way. So I guess that's why I do it. I always want to draw these really overly full lips. Remember too when shading, the top lips always in shadow. Like so. So like that, and the bottom lip, there's always like a glare right here or something like that. There's always a shadow under the bottom lip like that. Hold on, look at those lines. Little skinny neck for, you know, animated kind of feel. Okay, now the fun part, the eyes. The eyes have it. Alright, so now the key part of this, I think, is getting the inner part of the shape of the eye drawn first. So what I do, I try to focus on that. Alright, so say that's my inner shape of my eye. And you know what, I'm going to cheat because it's a straight on shot and I can do this. Control C, Control V, edit, oh, image, adjust, no. That's it. Oh, where'd it go? Where'd my eye go? Right over there. Is that on its own layer? 
Sorry, I'm babbling. Allow me to babble. And I'll go ahead and get that placed where I think it needs to be. It's kind of my opportunity too if my initial sketch was off to fix that. Hit enter. And the reason why I like copying it early on, because I'm not totally cheating right there. I could draw that if I had to. But now since I copied it early on by adding the rest of the details, I really didn't cheat. I just kind of gave myself a quick, you know, starting point. Okay, like so. And the thing that makes these look really cool if you get the inner part of the eye shape right, is you can kind of go crazy with the eyelashes on the outside. It doesn't matter because, which I don't like those, hold on. It doesn't matter because the inner eye shape, as long as you don't kind of break that original shape that you got, it looks cool because, you know, you can do whatever you want on the outside of that shape and not destroy the look of it, I guess. So, I'm trying to point these eyelashes off to the side more. something like that. I'm not going to spend a tremendous amount of time on this because this video is already pretty lengthy so sorry about that. But I did ask a bunch of people on this channel if they don't, you know, if they like the more lengthy videos and they said yay. So I'm going to go with that. More, you know, longer videos mean more information, right? If you can just stomach me sitting here babbling at you while I'm drawing stuff. Which, by the way, was what I did when I did characters. Fancy that. Of course, those guys could get up and walk away and go enjoy the party while I was stuck there. Drawing faces. Good times. Good times. Okay, so, you know, just kind of push the eyelash stuff to the side. And, you know, you can practice, you know, different ways to do those eyelashes. That's another style thing, just depends on how you like putting that in there. And then pupils, like so. A little shadow under the eye, like so. You know, if you want, you can get in there and do the little texture lines. That always looks cool. And, you know, the little gloss highlight, something like that. All right. Zoom back, see if that looks decent though. All right, so about bringing this to a close, so if you have any questions on the process in which I was talking, you know, about, you know, caricaturing and how it betters your comic book drawing, stuff like that. Uh, any questions on the software I'm using today, which is Sketchbook Pro, uh, just let me know. And also, I'm using a Wacom Cintiq because I always get questions on that, so I want to address that. So, the main focus of this uh, was the caricaturing aspect and how it helps comics, but also how you can make some money at it if you're an artist who's trying to you know make yourself a living so I do appreciate you watching please be sure to like and subscribe uh, I bring new videos each week on the topic of comic book illustration and digital painting uh, be sure to check out the Blackstone Eternal comic if you'd like to you can find that on Indie Planet I thank you for your time for watching today keep drawing keep having fun bye bye